it, that the appendix is vestigial. This is a lie. Your appendix is part of your immune system. It's been known for years. You need your appendix. Now you can live without your appendix. You can live without your adenoids. You can live without your tonsils. You can live without both your arms and both your legs. It doesn't prove you don't need it. The appendix is where the immune systems are initiated for the lower colon. Uh, Broker Encyclopedia tells about that. If you take your appendix out, you've got a much better chance of getting quite a few diseases. But hey, sometimes that's the best option. Get rid of it and it blew up, okay? This textbook says the whale has a vestigial pelvis. Many organisms retain traces of their evolutionary history. For example, the whale retains pelvic and leg bones as useless vestiges. This is a lie proven wrong years ago. They say, uh, just imagine whales walking around. There's the bones you're talking about right there. Just imagine the whale walking around. <laughs> there they are, Cambridge University. There they are. There they are in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The whale pelvis. Yep. Just imagine them walking around. I tried, you know, I just can't. Uh, the whale pelvis is located far from the vertebrae and has no apparent function. The whale's pelvis uh, is evidence of its evolution from four legged land dwelling mammals. This is simply a lie. Those bones are necessary, but they're anchor points that certain muscles attach to that allow the whales to reproduce. It has to do with getting baby whales. It has nothing to do with walking on land. So either these guys are all ignorant about whale anatomy, and they should not be writing a book about it, or they're deliberately lying, trying to find evidence for their theory to spread to your kids. Now, honestly, if there's evidence for evolution, show me. But don't use this. That's a lie. Such structures, which are considered to be evidence of an organism's evolutionary past, are called vestigial. For example, hind limbs of whale are vestigial structures. There are no vestigial structures, and if there were, that would still be the opposite of evolution. That's not evidence. They talk about amylocetus. You know what they really found for amylocetus is the dark bones here. We could talk a long time. She brings that up during Q&A. I'm ready for that one. I'd love to see that one. Ampl or pachycetus. There's another one. All they found was a few bones of the head. Later on, they found more bones of a different animal. They said, wow, it's like a wolf. The first one, though, they found a piece of skull, a small piece of jaw, and a few teeth. But the ear bones resemble slightly whale ear bones. They thought that's all they needed. Proof. There's a missing link right there. <laughs> an ear bone. We've got in our museum a 15 and a half foot python snake. At the south end, he's got little tiny claws sticking out of the body right there. These little claws are attached to a little tiny bone that goes up inside the snake's body. We also have a boa in our museum, six and a half foot live one. You can come down and pet it if you like. But they say, this textbook says, the rudimentary hind legs of a python snake are seen in the skeletal structure. Rudimentary hind legs. Those little claws are used in mating. Okay, the snake doesn't have any arms and he can't talk and say squid over honey. This has nothing whatsoever to do with walking on land. Now, if you got evidence for evolution, then show me. But don't use this kind of stuff. Okay? They're lying to your kids. This guy says the humans have a tailbone that is of no apparent use. I debated an atheist one time and he said, I got food for evolution. Human tailbone. I said, sir, I taught biology and anatomy. I happen to know there are nine little muscles that attach to the tailbone, without which you cannot perform some valuable functions. I won't tell you what they all are, but trust me, you need those muscles. I said, now, if you think the tailbone is vestigial, I will pay to have yours removed. <laughs> That's your tailbone is a small bone at the end of human vertebral column. It has no present function. And it's thought to be the remainder of bones that once occupied the long tail of a tree living ancestor. This is simply a lie. Okay? Now, tonight, I would like Dr. Trivers to be very specific. I don't want him to say biology offers evidence for evolution. I don't want to hear that. I want to see specifically what part of biology offers evidence for evolution. Don't say geology offers evidence for evolution. Give me a specific, okay? If you want to talk about the fossil record, I'm thoroughly prepared to do that. There is no fossil record. There are fossils, but there is no fossil record. They don't come with the data on them when you dig them out of the ground. All we know is there's a lot of bones found in the dirt. I mean, billions of them. None of them indicate they've changed from one to another. If you found one that looked a little different than something alive today, that still could prove an extinct species. You found a missing link. I'm telling you, in a court of law, they laugh at you for bringing up fossils. But the evolution doesn't have to be proven in a court of law. It only has to be made believable to a bunch of students. By a professor who has a very obvious academic and psychological advantage over those students. And I, for one, resent paying for that. And I think some other folks do, too. Thank you so much.